Good morning Year 3 and welcome to the final week of our unit all about fables. So this week you are going to be planning and then writing your own fable story. So today we are going to be focusing on the planet, planning aspect of it. So your learning objective today is to plan key events in a fable story. Let's just remind ourselves then of what are the ingredients for a great fable. So we have got our little mind map here. So the most important ingredient for a fable is of course the moral. So it must have a moral. Um, it also needs to have characters that are opposites and they're usually animals as well. So you might have a hero and a villain. Um, you might have a fast character and a slow character. Um, it is a short story and you usually only have two or three characters in the story and the setting is usually outside as well. So over the last couple of weeks we've been looking a lot at the type of language that we should be using to make our short fable story clear to the reader. So one of the types of language that you need to be using when you write your fable is conjunctions. So making sure you are using those words like and, but, because, so to join your ideas together. Adverbs of time as well to ensure that you are ordering the events correctly. So first, next, then. And prepositions to show position. So words like under, on, behind, next to, all of those words for prepositions. And finally, using speech marks as well to share the character's speech and to share events. On this slide then are some final pointers before you start to begin to plan your fable. Um, so it just tells you the purpose of a fable, so it's obviously to teach the reader a lesson. Um, the structure, so telling you that it should be a short story with very few characters. Um, simple narrative um, with a beginning, a problem and then a resolution or an end. Um, two characters meet, an event occurs and then they go on their way with one of them having learned an important lesson. Uh, language features, so dialogue is only used to advance the plot or to state the moral of the story. Characterization is limited and spe specific. For example, a lazy duck was making its way to the river. A crafty raven was sitting on a branch. And lots of conjunctions are used to show cause and effect. So some final points to remember. So if your characters are animals, make them behave like human stereotypes. For example, a brave little ant, a wise old owl, a cunning fox, a lazy do donkey. Um, make sure you use your main characters to give your fable a title, for example, the ant and the elephant. Um, make sure that you are stating the moral of your fable clearly at the end. Don't add too much detail or description and only use dialogue if it helps to tell the story. And make sure that you are establishing the setting or telling the reader the setting in the first line and introducing the two main characters as soon as you can. OK, so now we're going to start thinking about our fable and planning our fable. So the first thing that you are going to have to do is you are going to have to decide on a moral for your fable. So we have got some examples here that you can choose or you might want to use your own. So the examples that we have got are practice makes perfect. Don't put something off until the next day. If you see someone in need, help them out. Don't always follow the crowd. Treat others as you would like to be treated and nobody likes a show off. So you are welcome to choose one of those morals or you are more than welcome to use a moral that you might have thought of yourself. The next part in the planning process then is to choose your characters and to choose where your fable will be set. So remember, your characters are usually animals and there is usually only two of them. So we have got some choices for you on the screen. So you are more than welcome to choose two of those animals. Or again, you can use your own animals you might have thought of. And there's also some setting ideas as well there for you. So you've got the sea under a log, in a jungle, by a pond, in a garden, on a farm. Um, or again, if you have thought of your own setting, you are welcome to use that. So using the planning template that I provided, we are going to start to plan our fable. So you can see on the planning template, there are six boxes. So the first box says, what is your moral? The second box says setting. 
Um, you've got a third box which says select characters and then at the bottom you've got three boxes which are your beginning, your problem and your solution or your end. Okay, so here is the planning template and I have put my moral in as don't put something off until the next day. So that's the moral that I've decided to base my fable on. Um, and now I'm just going to fill in my setting box. So I've decided that I'm going to set my fable in the garden. So I'm just going to write that in there. Let's make sure I've got a space. Okay, so I've written that in there as my setting make that bold so it's a bit clearer okay so now I've got my moral box filled in and I've got my setting box filled in and then the next box that I would like to fill in is going to be my characters okay so on the box it says draw a picture of your characters and write down their characteristics now I can't show you me drawing on here so I'm just going to write down the characters that I have decided that I'm going to use so I have chosen a dog and I'm going to call him the lazy dog okay and I've also chosen the opposite of a dog um, which is a cat and I'm going to choose the opposite of lazy as well. So you could have energetic, I could have organised, I could have prepared. Um, so I think I'm going to go with the organised cat. Okay, so I'm just going to make those into bold. Brilliant. Okay, so there are my characters and you can obviously draw a picture of your two characters as well. Right, now I am going to fill out my beginning box. Okay, so again, because this is just a plan, we do not have to write full sentences. Okay, so we can just write down notes. So it gives us an idea of what we want our beginning to be about. So I've decided that the dog and the cat are going to be in the garden. It's a lovely sunny day. Um, the dog gets a bone and the cat gets a fish and then the dog goes to bury the bone and the cat buries the fish and then they go back to laying in the sun. So I'm just going to put them for my beginning. Um, dog, bone and I'm going to put cat, fish. And then I'm going to put berry in the garden and lay in the sun. Okay, so very, very simple. So I've just written the dog has a bone, cat has a fish, they bury them in the garden and then they lay in the sun. And that is the beginning box done. The next box that I want to fill out then is my problem box. Okay, so this is going to be the problem that happens that needs to be solved in order to teach the lesson. So I've decided that the problem is going to be that the cat has heard that it's going to be terrible snow showers tomorrow, really heavy snow, and so she is suggesting that they dig up their bone and their fish so that they have them before the snow falls. Um, but the dog, who is lazy, decides that actually no, he doesn't want to do this. He doesn't think it's going to snow, it's lovely sunny weather, and he just wants to stay laying in the garden. So I'm just going to type that in my problem box then. So I'm going to say heavy snow, cat suggests to dig up bone and fish. I'm going to put dog doesn't want to doesn't want to do this. Okay so I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller because unfortunately box isn't 
that big on my screen, but it will be bigger obviously when you've got it in front of you. Okay, so I've just put heavy snow, cat suggests to dig up bone and fish, dog doesn't want to do this. Okay, so the dog just wants to stay laying in the sun, he doesn't believe it's going to snow and he's quite happy um, to just do that. So the cat goes and digs up her fish. So then the last box, which is the solution box, is what happens at the end of the fable. So in here, we're just going to write some notes about what we want to happen at the end. So in the end of my story, the dog is going to wake up, he's going to look out the window and he's going to see that actually Cat was right. It has snowed very heavily, it's covering the garden, and now he has no idea where his bone is buried. And the cat's sitting there eating her fish and the dog doesn't have anything. And the moral is going to be at the end, don't put something off until the next day. So had he listened to the cat and dug up his bone like she suggested, then he would be able to be sat there eating his bone, but instead he's not got anything. So that is what I am going to put in my end box or my solution box. So I'm just gonna write that in my end box then. So I'm going to write, dog sees it has snowed no idea where bone is buried wished he'd listened to cat okay so i've just written that down as some notes for me so that i know what i'm going to be writing for my ending in my fable so what i'd like you to do now is to go and do your own plan for your fable so Remember to fill out the boxes, choose your moral, choose your setting, your characters, um, and then just remember notes in your beginning, your problem and your end boxes. Um, and I'm really looking forward to reading some of your fables. So good luck year three.